day, good day, good day. Um, welcome to this session. On this session, I'll be showing you guys some of my uh, solutions of this uh, grade 11 uh, maths uh, term 1 test, uh, which was written in uh, Capricorn South District in the province of Ipompo. So it was written on the 12th of uh, March, 2024. So without wasting any time, I'm going to go through uh, the solutions and also the questions. And uh, please, again, um, if you are new to the channel, uh, please subscribe, like, and also share, and also comment um, if you've got other different solutions that you might want us to attempt on. So this question paper was out of 100. Um, the first question was um, about uh, algebra, so that uh, three uh, different sets of questions for 1.1, which were all about simplifying. So they were all involving uh, exponential laws. Then 1.2 was also uh, about working with a uh, square root or that. So these are my solutions. So with the first uh, question, uh, because we're dealing with exponential laws, I guess went there and grouped um, all my numbers also with the exponent, but I had, we had to change uh, 15 to become three times five, so that at least we can have the same base, which was three and five in this instance, same as 27, was changed to 3 to the power of 3 then once you get all the same basis we had to use the exponential laws of adding or subtractions and once i did that um after simplifying everything i end up with uh, 3 times 5 which gave us 15. so uh, with the second question also about exponential laws uh, we had to go there and group the numbers first then once you got the common factor which was 2 to the power of x then i put everything else in the bracket then I simplify everything, and then once I simplify everything, uh, I end up with uh, 5 um, over 2.5, and then that was 5 over 2.5, and then that gave me the answer of uh, 2, if I'm mistaken, I give my answer of 2 when I did the calculations. And then with 1.1.3, uh, um, same thing again, we had the same base, which was x, so I guess when then add the exponent, as well as uh, minusing the one that is coming underneath, and then once I got that number in decimal, it gave me x to the power of uh, 0.42. With uh, 1.2, um, this one was sad. So before I could do anything, I went and removed the square roots. So I had to divide uh, the number, which was 6 there, uh, with the number which is outside there, which is 3, both sides the same thing. And then I simplified to 2 and 2. From there onwards, I expanded my two brackets, and then I just went there and did the simplifying. And then once I simplified, that's the number that I was ending up with, and then I just left the answer like that because I didn't want to use the calculator. So from the on ones, we went to question number two. Question number two was also about uh, algebra. So here it was about solve for x as well as nature of roots. So with this uh, question here, yeah, the first one um, was all about cross multiplication. So I went there and did cross multiplication, and then once I did cross multiplication, I simplified my thing. Then I end up with my trinomial which was x squared minus x minus 2. Once I got my trinomial, that's when I just went there and did the factors, and I got my two solutions. And then with 2.1.2, uh, also, just did simplifying. Once you did simplifying, then you bring 5 to the other side. Once you get a trinomial, because the question was asking us to run off to the nearest two decimal. So once you get the trinomial, just go there and put uh, the values on the formula, of uh, the quadratic formula, which I did there. And then once you put the values as they are on the calculator, you get the answer first for plus, then from the onwards you get the answer for minus. This will be your two solutions. Then 2.1.3 also uh, it was about exponential loss. So here first thing first, we have to divide both sides by two. Once I did that, uh, I found uh, that 50 divided by two gave us 25. Once we've got uh, 25, we can change to exponent, which is five to the power of two. Then from the onwards we do the exponential loss, and then we equate uh, everything, which is give us x is equal to two. So and then I made a mistake of not putting 2.1.4 so now i just went there and did it on the screen as you can see so 2.1.4 uh, also the square root again it was square root uh, x minus 3 minus 4 everything was equal to 5 then from the onwards i went there and square both sides and then once i square both sides um then the 4 went other side which became 5 plus 4 then i also square the other side because you must square both sides then from there on one to end up with x minus 3 on the left, and then the other side it was 9 squared, which is 81. From there on one, 
3 goes the other side, which becomes uh, 81 plus 3. So my x was 84 for that one. And then with uh, 2.2, .2, it was about nature of roots. And remember, they say the roots are not real. So if the roots are not real, it must be less than 0, which I did there. Then from there onwards, um, the roots are non-real. So it will be less than 0. So your discriminant of b squared minus 4 is c will be less than 0. From there onwards, uh, if you get the square root inside there, they gave us everything already uh, in the square root. We already know from the square root that uh, it's going to be b squared minus 4ac over 2a based on the formula uh, the quadratic. So using that, uh, we're only going to just take everything as it is in the formula, which is b squared minus 4ac, where they will be on the square root. So if I take that on the given uh, example, the, we found that we had uh, 16 minus 4b in the bracket, it was b plus 5. Then I went there and simplified everything. Take numbers one side and also letter one side. So from there onwards, just continue there and I just went there and divide both sides by negative 5. And then we know when you're dealing with inequalities, once you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative number, the sign must change. Because before we had less than, now it becomes greater than. Uh, 21 over 5 so then i just continue 2.3 2.3 it was about maximum so if you're doing grade 12 whenever it's about maximum for grade 12 we tend to use um the other part uh, that would be um with regards to maximum if you are doing grade 12 uh, you can just do derivative but if you are doing grade 11 we normally use the uh, formula which is x is equals to negative b over 2a from there onwards, whatever the b value is, you put it as it is. So if you look at the square root there, we know if a trinomial, which is ABC in the square root. So with the trinomial, which is ABC, just take the value of b, which is 4 in that instance, then over 2 times a, which is negative 1, then that gave us 2. Then from there onwards, you just go and um, solve for y or look for the y value or the corresponding y value for x is equal to 2. So when you put 2 in the square root there, you simplify to uh, square root of 16 which is 4 and they'd ask us to prove that so that was our answer for that one so just continue question number three it's about inequalities and also simultaneous so we just went there and did the first one where uh, first thing first you must get the factors then once you get the factors uh, get the critical values so the critical values here uh, it was minus 1 over 2 and 2 from the on ones and uh, do a smiley face and then from there onwards, uh, our two solutions that we got here, it was x is greater than 2 or x is less than or equal to minus negative 1 over 2. Those are the final two solutions that you must uh, come up with. Then we just continue the similar question, which is about also inequalities. So here we have to first group uh, the numbers together. Then once you get a trinomial, you get the factors. Once you get the factors, get the uh, critical values, which was negative 3 and also 1 over 3 here. Then from there onwards, um, you can go and find the two solutions, which was x will be greater than um, negative 3 or less than 1 over 3. Then with simultaneous, there was a seven mark question. So first number, we just label 1 and 2. From there onwards, you find number 3, which you record as 2x plus 8. Once you get number 3, wherever you see y or number 2, we put uh, number 3, which is 2x plus 8, which I did there. Then from there onwards, just group all the like terms together. So I just went there and put the like terms together. Then from there onwards, I simplified everything. Then I got my trinomial. Once you get the trinomial, I divide everything by 2. Then once I get it divided by 2, it became easy to get the factors. If you're comfortable, use the uh, quadratic formula. Once I get the factors, just equate everything to 0. Then I got x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 6. Then I went there and got, uh, get the corresponding x values. So I get the corresponding y values for each. And then we saw that uh, when x is 2, y gave us 12. When x is minus 6, uh, y gave us um, minus 4. Then those are the two uh, solutions that we got. Then from there onwards, we went to question number uh, 5, which is about uh, trigonometry. Oh, and then I just saw that I skipped question number 4. So I'll do another video for question number 4. So with number 5 was about trigonometry. So with trigonometry, it's about the uh, right angle triangle. So just go there first, simplify whatever they give us by taking one the other side and then divide everything by uh, 3. Then that gave us a uh, negative 1 over 3 as tan. Remember, tan is opposite over adjacent. So I know that negative 1 is my opposite. So I look where uh, negative 1 exist. 
on the y which is that side on the fourth quadrant then x will be three so i put them like that then from there onwards i just did a um, theorem of pythagoras to solve for r which we got as square root of 10 then i put the value there so the question was uh, they gave us 30 sine squared theta plus 40 square root of 40 uh, cos theta so whenever you see sine I went there and put negative 1 over square root of 10. Wherever I see cos, I just put 3 over square root of 10 because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then from there onwards, just put the numbers as they are. Then you can just solve them. Uh, leave wherever you, you see as possible. Then with the next question, similar question, but here they gave us sine 17 is equals to a. So first thing here, you must divide by 1 because you must always get a fraction. Once you divide by 1, and then I get my right angle triangle. Then I went there and solved for the mixing side, which in this extent was the adjacent of the x. So I found x as square root of 1 minus a squared using the Pythagoras. Therefore, I know tan will be opposite over adjacent. So my tan was opposite, which is a over square root of 1 minus a squared. So the second question was they gave us a uh, sign 1 or 7. So I know that uh, with this type of questions, because I'm given sign there. So I just went there and used uh, 90 degrees. As my angle, so that, and that gave me a uh, 90 plus 17, which take me to 107. From there onwards, I just use um, what we know about a uh, sine 90 plus an angle, which changes to become cos. So it became cos 17. Cos 17, I know that is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which will be square root of 1 minus a squared over 1, or we'll just leave the answer as square root of 1 minus a squared. Then from there onwards, uh, just do the next one, which is 5.2.3. It was about cos squared 253 plus sine squared 557. So from there onwards, uh, remember the triangle they gave us was having 17. So because we know that it's 90 uh, degrees, so it would be 90 plus 17 uh, plus another number, that it must be a sum of 18. So I went there and found the missing sum or missing number, which is 73, because the whole of 73 plus 17 plus 90 must take us to 18. So meaning the other side of my triangle 73 degrees which means now it allows me to go and find other values which are required so i know i'm given 253 so i know that if i were to focus on 180 or 360 if i add 180 plus a certain number that gave me to 73 so to 253 so i added 180 plus 73 and then the other side i just went and added uh, 360 uh, plus uh, 193 which also gave me 557 from the onwards, I know 180 plus only tan must be positive, so it came back as negative uh, cos 73 squared. And then the other side, uh, it came back as positive because 360 plus everyone is positive. Then from the onwards, I just simply find my numbers as they are. And then I know where 73 is. If I put, if I have a cos on 73, then my adjacent becomes a, and then the opposite becomes square root of 1 minus a squared, which I just put them as they are there. Then I also put for 180 plus 17, but remember 180 plus it will be negative, but because it's squared, it will come back as positive. Don't be surprised why the answers are come back as positive, because we had a squared before. Once you have a squared and then it's negative, the answer come back as positive. So my final answer uh, that I got was a plus square root of 1 minus a squared. So last question was question number 6, also about trigonometry. So first thing, I had to go and simplify that to get the special angles. So just go and add a number on uh, that will give you the responding number. But I know that if I add 45 on 180, I get 2 to 5. Then focus on each quadrant and then simplify as possible. So when I did my simplification, I end up with an answer of 1 over 4. And then I just continued also doing the same thing. So with the next question, I just went there and did my sort of like algebra by expanding both sides since they're all squared. Then from there onwards, I just group cos squared and also sine squared because they always give us 1. Once I got 1, I just leave the answer as 1 plus uh, 2 sine x cos x, which is the same thing as uh, sine 2x if you're doing grade 12. So my final answer was 1 plus uh, sine 2x or sine x, 2 sine x cos x. Then uh, the last part of the question was about proving. So I had to go and do the proving by just changing what I know about tan. Then from there onwards, again, f sine and cos which give us one to just simplify it and cancel all the similar numbers that end up with one over cos. And then the last one was about uh, just doing the special angles again. We just put the values as they are and then got the answer. Leave it as way I can possibly leave it as. And then if you have got questions, uh, comment on this comment section and then I can assist where I can. And then I hope these solutions are going to help. 
and then i'll also post on the facebook page twitter next